We're talking to of my other friends. I, I like my friends. Sean Carruthers and Andy Walker. They're the authors. Old friends from the TV shows we did in Canada together, but also the authors. And you may remember them from Lab Rats, the podcast uh, of a brand new book with Kay Walker and his, and his wife, Super You, How Technology is Revolutionizing What It Means to Be Human. I don't want bigger breasts. I've Mine are big and plenty big enough. I don't know if I want to be ever get pregnant, uh, but I am very interested and always have been at protecting and improving my brain. Uh, and and you, we're seeing all sorts of things like something called what is it? Nootropics, and also nootropics. Yeah, yeah. Nootropics is that how you pronounce it? N o o nootropics. Nootropics. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just ordered some nootropics um, that Steve Gibson recommended. What? So what are are people successfully getting making themselves smarter, or is this just another yeah. snake oil? No, no, they are. It's it's been proven that you can see the thing. What we've discovered about in neuroscience is that the brain is plastic, meaning not like Tupperware, but it's plastic, like it can be molded. Although, right? if Andy were going to demo this, I imagine he would use Tupperware. I'd use probably silly putty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> brain is much right? like silly putty. Yeah. So it's malleable. It's malleable in the last 10 years, in the last 10 or 15 years, we've, we've sort of realized that, that it does change. And so what you can do is you can modify it from a physical perspective, either using some sort of, call it a drug, but nootropics is really a substance that sort of will enhance it, uh, enhance connections, things like that. And uh, uh, so with exercises, there's a, there's a guy called uh, um, Adam Ghazali who's developed video games that helps, that challenges you and can actually help improve mental uh, illnesses, depression, anxiety, um, things like that, to actually reshape your brain to make you better, or in, if you are baseline okay, then make you even better than you are when you came out of mom's belly kind of idea. And are these, I mean, it, I you hear about people in Silicon Valley using these. Are is it safe to use these or not? Uh... <laughs> Well, the jury's out on it, right? I mean, they're just so new that we just don't right. know. There are, there are not a lot of, I mean, it's sort of user beware, little asterisk that says, you know, use them at your own peril. Uh, the, it, it, what's been demonstrated is that they do uh, enhance. The question is, what's the long-term impact on that? Right. And that's what's still not known. And when they develop a new nootropic, you know, what's going to happen uh, in 10 years to your brain? I mean, will you suddenly go on a massive decline or, you know, is it just a, it's just going to help you change your brain for the better ongoingly? You quote uh, Greg Gage, who's a neuroscientist in his TED talk. He said, one in five of us at some point in our lives will have a neurological disorder. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, it's funny. We bury that. We put it that we, it's so stigmatized that uh, mental illnesses or any neurological disorder are, are, are just stigmatized. We don't want to think about it. We don't want to talk about it. It's, and yet, uh, it's something that's going to happen to 20% of the population. That's right, yeah. And yeah. so, it's, it's actually quite solutions. profound. Yeah. You know, in, here in the U.S., you know, we are, we are really, really horrible at managing mental illness. Right. That it is such a widespread thing, and yet it is not supported by, you know, health care or health insurance. No, in fact, some of the it's treatments are still medieval. <laughs> You actually talk about some medieval treatments in here, like yeah. Well, I mean, they used to like to you know cut the the the, the spheres of your brain, you know, to lobotomy, to stop. right? Lobotomies and that kind of thing, yeah. Um, you know, but they were, they also realized that that uh, there was a guy, it was a famous um, uh, uh, incident, a guy called Phineas Gage who had a, a pole through from a blasting cap go through his skull, and it changed his personality. And it was actually helpful to neuroscientists at the time because it people realized that. You know, an injury like that actually changes your personality. Um, and it became sort of the, some of the beginnings of, of realizing, you know, how the brain really worked. But it's, it's actually a very, very new science. You know, there, we call it almost like adolescent in the way right. that we treat it now because we just ha haven't known much about the brain for the longest time. Where we're going, though, is the idea of, you know, we talk about nanobots or nanites, they call them, uh, floating around in your bloodstream, being able to create connections um, you know, in your brain, in your, in your body. And uh, the idea is that one day we will be able to connect out to Google or to the internet and to on demand pull in uh, faster processing for our brain or uh, access to more information. So we could be walking down the street, you look up, you see somebody, you ask Google with this connection from your brain to the internet for a recollection of who that person was, you know, using some sort of uh, cloud-based uh, app 
and then the information is delivered to your brain. You go, oh no, that's uh, that's my old friend Steve, or what you know, whatever the uh, the answer that comes back is. Yeah, we are, and I wouldn't even say adolescence, infancy. I mean, it's only been the last couple of uh, decades that we've really kind of started to understand how the brain works. Uh, we interviewed on this show Jeff Hawkins, uh, who wrote a fabulous book called On Intelligence, and talks about what we know, and it's very little. Mm. Jeff Jeff is the founder of. Uh, uh, graffiti and palm and he uh, he's trying to right. create a, uh, a a chip that works not like a typical von neumann machine you know as a deterministic computer like the ones we're used to but more like the highly parallelized but much slower human brain he says if mm -hmm. we're going to make smart machines it it may be that we need to make them work more like we do and less like a computer does yeah organic organic maybe even yeah <laughs> Well, they say that, you know, you, you put a nanite, people, we, we have this sort of idea that it's going to be some sort of piece of metal floating around, but our bodies naturally reject, you know, external material. So it actually, these nanites may actually be more like disabled viruses. So we inject our own material into us, it's modif modified at a nanoscale um, that has a functionality to either make a connection or disable a connection or to do something functional that our natural brain or our natural body couldn't otherwise do. You know, can you imagine... Uh, filtering the blood for a particular hormone or for, for blood sugar, for example, either in, you know, telling an external pump to put more sugar in or take more sugar out. Um, you know, at that level, and we're talking microscopically small devices, that, and, when we're now, and we're not talking 30 years here, we're talking 10, 15, maybe 20 years before this kind of technology will be available for us. You know, the idea of connecting to Google uh, in you know, maybe more like 30 years or so to the 2040, 2045 time frame. But uh, this technology is already starting to happen. There's one guy we talked to who has engineered what is called a chip, but it's not really a chip. It's a little platelet that goes into the bloodstream and it detects um, when you have eaten uh, food uh, and your blood sugar is rising. And then it releases a hormone to, say, to send a signal to your brain to say, I'm full. So you can imagine now doing that uh, instead of going on a diet, right? Your body, its natural mechanisms are now going to slow down your hunger. So the idea of obesity, you know, could be obsolete. I'm ready for I'm ready for that pill. <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice, right? <laughs>